I think I've really just become convinced that God has his reasons and I can trust those reasons and I'm on a need to know basis and I don't need to know, uh, you know, what those reasons are. Truth Seeker is asking, and um, this is, you know, this is an Old Testament question. Why did God kill David's son for his wrong? I thought in Deuteronomy and Ezekiel, it says one cannot be punished for their parents' actions. And so I guess the point here being that, you know, God has these, these rules set up in the law that, you know, kids aren't punished for their parents' actions. And then you have this situation uh, for anybody who's unfamiliar where David sees Bathsheba, sleeps with her, gets her pregnant, then gets her husband killed, and he commits all this evil. And then ultimately, after he repents and God forgives him, God takes the life of his first son. So how do we explain that in the framework of what's going on with God's law and all that? Do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, so this, you know, it's, I, I want to push back a little bit on the phrasing of the question, of course. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't know that it's right to say that God killed David's son, um, or at least we want to be real careful how we, how we think of that. Um, and I, I also think in terms of like, not, you know, God's, you know, to say something like God cannot do this, God cannot uh, punish the children, you know, for the parents' actions. Again, I don't know if that's the right sort of categories for looking at this story. Uh, I guess what I would say that we we do know for sure um, that we can be sort of quite clear on is that um, we will experience the consequence of others sins and life choices and so on. I mean, th we don't even have to go to a story as dramatic as as David's. Um, the decisions my parents made affected me in, in big ways, you know, e even, you know, not even just their sin actions, but but certainly the, the choices that they made that along the way that just weren't weren't the best or weren't the right ones have affected me in my life and 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 my choices affect my kids and so on. So we live in a world in which, and this is where I think it does get difficult because we, and this has to do with sort of problem of evil issues that of course we could say a lot more about. And I do talk about in the book some. Uh, we tend to think of very individually, individualistically, I should say, when we think of the problem of evil. Like we think about how good is my life? <laughs> and the reality is that we live in a fallen world and um, I didn't, it, it was Adam and Eve's choice uh, uh, under which we live with some of the consequences of their choice. And I don't think of that as God's punishment on us um, as much as just that that's part of, this is probably not a bad place to end the discussion for today too, is that, right, that God has a plan and purpose for everything. And I think that's the really, you know, this is the hiddenness issue. This is the problem of evil question. This is as we wade through really difficult passages in Scripture and we wonder why God would do it the way he did. I think I've really just become convinced that God has his reasons and I can trust those reasons. And I'm on a need to know basis and I don't need to know, uh, you know, what those reasons are. And, and for many of them, uh, we won't. So we're actually going through the book of Job right now in our um, the Sunday school class that I teach at church. And we're literally going chapter by chapter. Uh, and it's been difficult in some ways, but so rich and so rewarding. And I don't, I don't remember the last time I went through Job really carefully that mm -hmm. way. And you just kind of come out from that, like, I mean, we can look at David, but we can look at Job too. I mean, there's so many, mm -hmm. Job didn't do anything wrong. And in a way his children suffered. Was that punishment for his sins? Well, in the book of Job, it's the answer is no. Um, and again, I don't know if that's the right way to look at it, David, but what we can do, our, our right sort of attitude as we wrestle with this is understand that God does have his reasons, even if we don't know, because we don't have the divine vantage point that God has, where he sees, uh, right, the beginning from the end, or the end from the beginning, and he, you know, has purposes that may stretch out 
many, many centuries later uh, that we just couldn't foresee, especially because we occupy this narrow little slice of time. Um, and that's the that's the thing that really hit me with the book of Job as we're as we've gone through it. And as I've thought about it before is like when you wonder, like Job doesn't even find out what we know from chapters one and two, where God and Satan are kind of going back and forth. Job never even gets those answers that we know from the very beginning of reading the book. Um, and you think, well, man, the poor guy, like, <laughs> and you really do feel that as you go through, like, poor guy. But when you consider the powerful impact that the book of Job has had mm. on, you know, what, three or four millennium of people, millennia of people, um, w whenever you think the book of Job was actually uh, penned, my goodness, like the goodness of Job's mm. circumstances and experiences where people find just, uh, you know, solace that they can't find anywhere else by walking through the pages of the book of Job and and kind of see, coming to the end where God shows up. Mm. And I think that's the really powerful point is to say that, man, yeah, we can be upset and we sh and, and that's OK to be upset and it's OK to sort of wrestle and it's okay to, uh, you know, have these sorts of objections even and these doubts and so on. But all of that should be for the goal of coming to that place where we see God more clearly at the end, if we can. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that's the, that's, you know, I think some people really lose their way. And that's, you know, of course, the point of the wandering toward God is that we would do that intentionally so that as we struggle with those sorts of questions and doubts and so on, that we would be doing it to find God, right? Not not in the posture of a skeptic, mm -hmm. because I think that's, and that is that is so crucial that as people wrestle through their questions that they don't adopt the posture of a skeptic, but rather uh, coming back to Matthew 22, 37 again, uh, I alluded to that earlier, that we would adopt the posture of uh, a lover. Uh, a lover of God, that we love God with all of our hearts, souls, and minds. Um, not as a skeptic that we're asking these deep and difficult questions to kind of like, you know, throw stuff at God, but rather that we would find him and find him in a richer and deeper way through it all. Yeah, that's good. And one of my favorite books is, uh, I think it's a, an obscure little book called Hidden Treasures in the Book of Job by Hugh Ross. Uh -huh. And he talks oh, about okay. all the scientific well, predictions. Well, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a really fascinating book because he points out even, you know, because there's all, of course, all of this deeply... Um, deep stuff we can learn about suffering from Job and and all of that. But yeah. there's also, as Hugh Ross points out, like 40 or so scientific predictions that were made in, in Job that they could not have possibly known. And for him, as an astrophysicist, before he was a Christian even, things like that is what actually led him to faith in Christ because okay. he was like, how could, they couldn't have known this stuff. And he predicts the expansion yeah. of the universe and the, sure. I believe it, even the sphere of the earth. So anyway, very cool book. Um on that, and also, I would just add this as I was thinking through this question about David. You know, I think in our human temp temporal minds, we tend to think of death as a punishment. Or, um, of course, you know, the Bible says the wages of sin is death, but that has more of eternal consequences. It's talking about there. Uh, and also, uh, it's my belief, and I don't, you know, you don't have to agree with me on this. I don't know where you stand with free will and all of these things, but I think God knows the choices we're going to make in our life, and. Yeah. If he chose to bring that baby into his arms, which I believe that when when babies die, they go to be in the presence of God. They they go to heaven. And so for God to usher that baby straight into his arms and into heaven, what that wasn't a punishment on him. It was a punishment on David. Uh, that yeah. that had to do with David being punished for his That's own good. sin. And so yeah. um, that might be possibly a, a different way to look at it. And God knew that the, even the shame honor culture, what that child's life would have been like in a shame honor culture. Uh, and and possibly even knowing the child's future, you know, possible choices. And yeah. God just says, I'm going to just take this child into my eternal presence right now. And that's not a punishment on the, on the child. Um, so, you know, that's just a, some thoughts to consider on that question. <laughs>